Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So yes, it's an early morning right now. I'm heading into work, but this topic, after watching some more videos online, I just had to talk about this topic. So it's the Dodge Hornet. And yes, I have sat in it. No, I have not drove it, but I have sat in it front and back, experienced the cargo space, everything like that. And there's actually been a lot of hot, hot, uh, uh, talking about this. This has been a hot commodity lately on the good old YouTube. So I figured I would chime in on it as well and make a quick little video about my thoughts about the Dodge Hornet. So I have sat in the RT trim and the GT trim and really there's not much different in, in the trims. So uh, with that being said, I want to hit this right off the bat. I believe the Dodge Hornet is an awesome car. Uh, awesome car in the fact that the materials are nice, the seating, driver's seating position is nice, uh, the, the exterior look of the cars, I think in my opinion, looks great. And uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a practical car for some people. And uh, with that being said, you know, we've had, we had a Dodge Journey RT uh, of before my girlfriend upgraded to her Mercedes AMG GLE. So I kind of know what the base model, well not base model, but the uh, least expensive SUV option is for Dodge. And, uh, and here's where the Hornet, here's where the Hornet lacks. And I wanna hit that up right away. So the Hornet, well, it is a great design it lacks any sort of rear cargo space and, and really I'm sitting in my Chevy Volt right now and I have more front and rear space in this vehicle, front seats, rear seats, and cargo space in this vehicle than the Dodge Hornet, which I find astronomical in a compact hatchback sedan, hatchback style sedan. So. For the money that you pay for that vehicle, it just doesn't make sense <laughs> to to buy that vehicle. Um, the GT that I sat in at my local uh, dealer was an awesome blue color. The color was great. The interior was great. I love the interior um, design language on it. It was clean. The materials were really nice. All the touch points were soft. You know, the leather seating was really nice. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, I really did. Um, the, the seats were great. The one problem, I don't think I had uh, power seats though in that GT model. And here's the here's the main problem with it. That vehicle cost $37,000, $37,000. So I think, I wanna say the last year of the Dodge Journey RT, the top price on that was maybe $30,000, 30, 31, 32, 33,000 dollars and, and granted the touch points weren't as nice but it was still a nice high powered you know smaller SUV that could fit seven people in it just because of its overall design you know 300 horsepower out of a V6 was pretty good naturally aspirated and this Dodge Hornet GT was $37,000 and change and now some of these RTs with the plug-in hybrid power, uh, which which is similar to this Volt, which I like, is uh, uh, upwards of fifty to fifty-five thousand dollars. And I do have to say this: whether you get the GT or the RT, specifically the RT, it's a fast vehicle, five point six or five point five zero to sixty in an SUV. Let's be honest, guys. That's that's pretty fast, even in a subcompact SUV. I mean, you could look at my parents' Durango RT Tow and Go with the 5.7 liter Hemi V8. That does zero to 60 in just about the same time, 5.5, 5.6. And then you look at uh, our Mercedes AMG GLE 43, that does zero to 60 in like 5.2-ish, somewhere around there. So really, when you think about it, um, 
it's it's a pretty fast subcompact SUV. So it's got speed going for it. It's got interior design language and materials going for it. It's got exterior design language if you're into that going for it. What it doesn't have going for it though is the price. That is way too expensive of a vehicle to be buying, even if you're the average person. Um, I'm, I'm certainly not going to buy, I, I've only bought one vehicle that was $46,000 and that was my used Ram 1500 as you've seen on the channel if you're if you're a, a return person. So my next most expensive car was my 2017 used night edition Ram 1500, completely loaded, only a year old, bought that for 33. So for somebody to go out in, with today's uh, APR at, at 37 to $40,000, you're looking at 700 bucks a month with a decent down payment, 800 bucks a month. For a Dodge Hornet, if you're financing it, that's not affordable, guys. That's not affordable, and and I get it. Infl I own a business. Inflation, inflation, more money in the in the supply of money overall in the United States means prices just naturally have to go up. There's more money floating around now, so prices have to go up to account for that. You know, it's it's just it's it's how it is. So I get it prices are going to go up but man for a for a hornet for 37,000 and, and I've seen some of these hornets as low as 29 which is great but it's bare bones everything is manual control you're not getting anything nice in it everything is just a manually controlled option which sucks you know you don't want that you want the nice stuff i i i'm living in a bare bones chevy volt right now no heated seats the steering wheel is vinyl and I'm gonna be honest with you if this wasn't the fifth car we had <laughs> I probably wouldn't have bought the bare bones version of this car but the price was too good and the tax incentive was too good on it that's <laughs> so I had to do it but you're better off waiting for the poor schmucks that buy these cars new and then buy one of these cars used because you get a tax credit now you get a 30% or up to four thousand dollar tax credit when you buy one of these plug-in hybrid vehicles used. So that's what you really want to do and want to wait for. In my opinion, that's what I did with the Chevy Bolt. Doesn't matter the year, doesn't matter the condition. You can buy it used and get that tax credit. And that ultimately seems to make the most sense on this vehicle because I'm certainly not going out and I know uh, my girlfriend certainly isn't going out buying one of these Dodge Hornets when she bought a really nice used 2017 Mercedes GLE AMG for $28,000 with you know decently low miles on it. I'm not buying a Dodge Hornet for $40,000, not even in the RT trim. I want the RT trim. I want the power shot feature. I want that. So really, at the end of the day, the Hornet is plagued from its size, which I haven't even touched on. I wanna hit that before I hit the end of the day. So the rear hatch of the Hornet, it's so small back there, you can't fit a dog back there. You can't fit barely any groceries. If you have a dog, you could barely fit the dog food back there. Um, just normal stuff because it's such a small hatch. And the design, while the design does look good, um, ultimately it's hindered because it's a sloped roof line so there's no there's no rear space back there I mean like I said it, it, it's very comparable as to what I have in the back of this vault you maybe just get a little bit more height but I have I can I can make my Chrysler 300 SRT more practical than that Hornet in the back so it really at the end of the day it's essentially for someone who wants a crossover, doesn't need the space, and you can't really tow much with it because it's so small, and and and, and you just want all-wheel drive. Really, if I had a choice between that and a Dodge Charger all-wheel drive or a Chrysler 300 all-wheel drive, I'd go with one of those two because you get more space at the end of the day, I feel. So it, it, the Dodge Hornet is hindered, A, for its space. 
And granted, yes, it's a great design, but its practicality just isn't quite there. I get the same practicality in my Volt. B, number two, the price. Who is going out and buying a Dodge Hornet RT for $50,000 or $55,000? I'd rather go out and buy a used Dodge Durango RT Tongo or at this point a uh, 392 Durango used a couple years old for $55,000 and get my certified pre-owned warranty on it. That's what I would do. I certainly, it just, it, while it's a great, great car, it just doesn't command that sort of price to it. So, really, at the end of the day, those two things hinder the Dodge Hornet from succeeding. Price and practicality. The powertrain, whether it's good or bad, the plug-in hybrid feature is great, but... If there's a $10,000 jump, what uh, that's going to take you ultimately years and years and years to repay because I have that feature on my Volt where the 1.4 liter generator acts as a, as a generator and then the battery pack powers the vehicle. And for me, this, this ultimately saves us money at the end of the day. But for somebody else who's buying a $50,000 car RT compared to a $40,000 GT or $35,000 GT, the payback period is not even going to be worth it. So the price jump between RT and GT is too much to justify that um, power shot feature. So you may as well just get the GT with the track pack on it. So it, it just the the pricing of this vehicle hinders hinders the, the, the looks of it, the interior touch points, the comfort, and 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 the practicality hinders is hindered by the price. You know, maybe if this vehicle fully loaded was thirty five thousand dollars, you would have a winner. You would ultimately have a winner in the grand scheme of things. Maybe even forty thousand dollars, but that's pushing it. That's pushing it. It would have to be a little bit faster for it to be justified at forty thousand dollars. But at the prices they are charging is astronomically high for decent performance out of an RT, but no practicality, um, no luxury luxury out of it. And at that point, you may as well buy an Alpha Tonale. So. That's my thoughts on the Dodge Hornet. I loved sitting in it, guys. I really did. I wanted to succeed. It's a great vehicle. But at the end of the day, the price and the practicality hinder, the, hinder this vehicle. And it's a shame. Because it was well thought out. It was well made. But nobody's going out buying a $50,000 subcompact SUV. That's crazy. That is just crazy. So... All right, guys, with that, I'm going to leave it to you. I went on a little bit of a rant there. Uh, like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. That's my thoughts about the Dodge Hornet. I would love to drive one, love to get my hands on one and actually drive it. So, all right, guys, see you later.